if we pay close attention to here, we can start seeing the hyperemia mm -hmm. or increase in blood flow to the area. That will bring a lot of the macrophages or the... Uh, Basically the healing compounds in the blood, right? Exactly. It's like white blood cells, macrophages. So they're um, going to gobble up all the debris, mm -hmm. create... Room for healing, essentially, exactly. right? Cool. You know what they say, it's got to get dirty before it gets clean. Perfect. So, mm -hmm. Hi friends, PC here at Gravity and Oxygen Fitness in beautiful Boca Tone, Florida, coming to you with another awesome episode of Turf Talk Tuesday. I'm alongside my man, Don Foss, and our wonderful colleague, Dr. Oleg Gozenputh. Dr. Oleg is a chiropractor recently relocated from the Northeast, who is moonlighting out of our facility with his fantastic practical skill set. And uh, I'm gonna be the awkward demonstration model as Dylan and Dr. Oleg talk about a technique called the Grassen Technique for Soft Tissue Mobility. I'm gonna go silent and let them take it away. Cool, so we obviously know soft tissue mobility is huge. Graston is one of many forms that we can utilize to create some Correct. mobility in the fascia and the tissue. Do you wanna explain a little bit more to the audience what exactly Graston is, where it comes from, kind of the, the yep. background on it? So the history of Graston, uh, the name Graston is actually a um, trademark uh, name, but it is a adaptation of an old technique from Chinese medicine called Gua Sha. So the most important thing that we're focusing on is breaking up the adhesions and unwinding the uh, the tension in the, the, in the, the tension muscle. in the muscles as well as rehealing that area in a way that is more functional. Mm -hmm. The scar tissue that builds from an injury is non-functional, so it becomes weaker and creates a blockage to the nervous system, which will create less mobility and which will lead to less function. Mm. Dr. O, is this a medieval torture device or is this actually going to benefit me? Yes, it, it, it is a little bit of both. <laughs> so, But it, the, the most important thing is that there's different sizes, tools for different applications mm. depending on the surface area. So something like this would be used for quadriceps and calf muscles and maybe latissimus dorsi and maybe somewhere where we can get a lot of the surface area in one shot. Long bones, maybe. Yes. Yeah. And then we can use smaller surface areas to get in a little bit um, finer mm. areas, areas to break it up. You know, I had a calf injury back in May, and you yes. were a big part in helping treat that. Um, so what came, uh, what came to your assessment realizing that maybe the grass and technique would, would benefit my leg? So because we knew that there is a tear, so we waited for your tear to actually heal up, but knowing that any kind of injury will create that kind of ball of yarn effect, which will weaken the tissue, by breaking up those scars, we will able to uh, heal it up properly in a uh, parallel fashion. Mm -hmm. Understood. So Dylan, as we know, when muscle contracts, it's beautiful parallel patterns, but when we injure or strain a muscle, it lays down, like you said, like a ball of yarn, correct? And in that is less elasticity and cooperation of that muscle. I like how you said it, it just kind of disconnects the body's ability to actually utilize that yes. tissue. So lack of blood flow, lack, lack of connection between the mind and the muscle just kind of puts your body in anything that's further from your body than the injury point at risk of injury. Exactly, yeah, Pretty especially simple. above and below mm -hmm. because we start to overuse those yeah. areas. Compensation. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. Should we demonstrate? Let's, Let's do it. it. All right, here we go. Face down. Here comes the fun part. Oh okay. boy, fun for them. So it was, PC, it was your right calf. It was the right calf muscle. Right, right. calf muscle. So with soft tissue, instrument-assisted soft tissue mobilization, that's a, just another term for the technique that we're using. We always want to use some kind of emollient, and it could be many different things. We're using rock rub. Rock rub. Yeah. So we're going to apply to the area and around it, because just because the injury was in one place doesn't mean the surrounding tissues are not going to be affected. So we want to do a nice broad spread. And as I'm applying it, I'm also getting a feel for where the apex, apex? Apex, yeah. Apex is. Apex. So essentially I, you're feeling for where the tissue is most taut, right? Exactly. Where it's tightest, where those adhesions might still be lingering. Exactly. 
Cool. So because this is a um, third or fourth application of this technique, I'm actually feeling that the, the injury is actually moving. Mm. And it used to be right here, yeah. but now it's pretty soft, so we're not gonna apply too much work on here. But as we're coming down into the medial gastric, I'm feeling there's a lot of tension right in there. Do you feel that, Paul? I do. Perfect. So, so just like I said, we're gonna start broad, and then we're gonna come in into create a little bit more finer. Okay. Correct. Cool. So we wanna do a little scan again, and right there we feel the roughness under the skin. So when you say roughness, from your standpoint, it almost feels like there is, uh, it's like driving over a bumpy road. Exactly, that's, okay. e that's exactly how it feels. Cool. So we're gonna go at a 45 degree angle and we're gonna just pull across. Cool, in, in parallel with the muscle fibers. Exactly, okay. so in gua sha, there's a big distinction between old school gua sha and the modern uh, instrument Grasp. assisted or Graston mm -hmm. or instrument assisted mm -hmm. soft tissue mobilization is that in Gua Sha they only went one way. Mm -hmm. In Graston we're actually gonna go in all cardinal directions. Okay, cool. And, and now as you're doing so if you watch you might even be able to see the bumpiness here as he goes up and down the calf in different parts of the, me the muscle belly are creating more of that bumpiness and you can tell that he has the, the ankle in dorsiflexion to put the calf, right, those two gastroc um, heads in actually more of a stretched position exactly. so that the muscle fibers are a little bit more exposed. Um, and if we pay close attention to here, we can start seeing the hyperemia mm -hmm. or increase in blood flow to the area that will bring a lot of the macrophages or the basically uh, the healing compounds in the blood right exactly. it's like white blood cells microphages so they're um, gonna gobble up all the debris mm -hmm. create room for healing essentially exactly. right cool you know what they say it's got to get dirty before it gets clean Perfect. So, mm -hmm. so the cleanup has begun pc are you feeling um the effects of this here is it pretty intense or not too bad i certainly on the inside of that cat muscle Right, so certainly feel here. more of that, that, that those bumps in the road, mm -hmm. and that's of course location of the injury. Yeah, so if you didn't hear that, he, he is feeling definitely the bumps on the road, he was saying, in the medial part of the gastroc. So as uh, he hits that, that right, medial yeah. part, he's definitely feeling a little bit more of the um, intensity. And with that, like Oleg was saying, now you have more muscle tissue and fibers actually being broken up so that they can have more of that parallel alignment and more blood flow going to the area to helpfully help break down the muscle tissue that was just broken up and get it out of there. Good. At this point, after five to 10 passes, mm -hmm. we can start to switch the direction and break up the tissue there. Now, obviously, people are probably wondering why the heck do you have your shirt off when you're doing calf muscle? So maybe we can talk about the maintenance aspect of how grass can benefit. So perhaps the areas of the upper body, let me try that too. Yeah. So because the fascia is a single piece of tissue that covers our whole body, mm -hmm. within and out, since we have an injury in one spot, it also benefits to use other areas as well. Mm -hmm. I think to clarify, I like to think of it like the, the muscles themselves are all separate muscles. They have an attachment point and an insertion point but how do they communicate together to synergistically move the body? And that is what fascia does, and it encapsulates the entire body. So when he says that it's important to work other parts of the body, we might not just focus on his calf because this is ultimately connected to other parts of his body. Everything is connected. So talk more about, like you mentioned the lat muscles before. Maybe yep. show me a technique that might work yep. in the upper body cool. and what you might do with it. Right. So you're gonna go sideways with your arm. Okay. Definitely felt that treatment before. Yeah, there we go. Actually, I went to the end. <laughs> Thank you for the sake of the video. Yeah. So now with the lat muscle, right? So Connecting all the way on the hip. Yep. And going all the way up to basically under the tricep, right? So your is your goal to work through that entire area? So the way I usually like to go, I, I will stay on the same side and will 
catch the next layer. Mm -hmm. So usually we'll go into the iliac crest because the fascia likes to warp itself around the bone because there's not a lot of cushioning there. Mm -hmm. So it likes to become sclerotic or thicken. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna release a little bit of the iliac crest, which will affect the latissimus dorsi, which is one of the biggest muscles mm -hmm. in our body. And it attaches to the thoracolumbar fascia, right? So it's a continuation of the same tissue. So by releasing it here, it will create slack down here as well. Interesting. Yeah. Pretty cool to think about. Mm -hmm. And for most people at home that are watching, it's not something that we're necessarily taught or are aware of, um, but it's good things to have awareness of because when we do feel sore, when we do feel tight, uh, there is an answer. It's just might not be super evident at first, you know? Sometimes I know people feel like they're just kind of living day to day and they don't know why they might be in pain. They're not seeing how the injury they had when they were back in high school is leading to some discomfort now because of day to day life. Exactly. And things like this can actually help bring those answers to light, which is awesome. And what creates fascial tightness or what creates fascial adhesions and those things are physical trauma, mm -hmm. emotional trauma, and chemical trauma. So when the fascia allows our tissues to glide through. So when you reach for something, it's not just your arm or your spine that's moving, your internal organs are moving as well. Mm -hmm. So when there's tightness and shortness in the fascia, everything gets garbled, and then over time, it creates issues that out of nowhere. Lack right? of function. Lack of for function. Whether yep. it's, you know, your brain or your heart or your liver or your kidneys yep. or your latissimus dorsi. Right? Exactly. They or all have a function. Cap. So okay. So because it's such a sensitive area, we have to slow down and go a little bit lighter. This one's gonna be fun for you, PC. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Good, so he's sporting a good tan line there, as you can see. And that's and actually great because we're already starting to see the redness, which tells us that we're on the right track. Mm -hmm. And that popped up much quicker than uh, From the, the previous uh, area that we did, right? Probably it's, a more, it's, a, it's a more superficial yep. to mm -hmm. the bone, exactly. whereas you have meaty calf muscle than you have right on my hip bone. You took the yeah. words right out of my mouth. <laughs> It's all added together. Cool. Now, because it's a little bit deeper here, we're gonna switch it around and we're gonna use the concave. Yeah. Concave. So here we're getting a little bit more specific. I think that might be convex, but that's one of, all right. one of those. All good. If you know the right answer, leave a comment. <laughs> <laughs> it's a <laughs> convex. <laughs> Do you so feel here we're release? actually seeing a. Uh, mm. An adhesion or. Adhesions or, breaking right? up. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Nice. Breathe, Paul. Breathe. Yeah, that's the biggest part, right? It can get a little painful here. Our body is gonna be always under tension when we hold our breath. Mm. And when we release our breath, our nervous system is able to relax and the sensitivity to pain comes down. And you can see the redness coming in here. So we've moved on from the iliac crest and now we're kind of hitting that big, that huge big muscle. muscle belly. Over you guys are way too kind. Over the top of the ribs. <laughs> Massive on this guy. <laughs> Wings big. Wings. <laughs> Once again, if you guys are, are watching this video, uh, Dr. Oleg is available for consult, mm -hmm. assessment, treatment, if you like. He is working at a Gravity Auction. Great opportunity to um, meet him in all of his practical skills beyond just his technique. He's also a funny guy, so you can talk yeah. to him and chat with him. and yeah. He'll make you laugh a couple times during your treatment. A fantastic exerciser himself, too. Comes with a lot of thank experience. You, thank you. you guys are making me blush. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> almost almost as much as Paul is blushing. <laughs> it goes both ways. That's right. So here we see another breakup right there. That tells us 
the scar tissue is a little bit more built up. Mm. So as we're breaking the scar tissue up, we're forcing the blood flow and oxygen. Would you say that that's a common area for that? Uh, yes, actually, all these things are very common because we are so flexion dominant. Mm. So all these muscles are mm -hmm. overworking. Yeah. I think even exponentially for someone, not, not only from an exercise standpoint, but if you happen to be in a swinging sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I am actually left-handed, but right now we're training, treating my right side. So you can imagine that Your left um, side would my be left side probably even more profound of, a, mm -hmm. of an effect. Because yeah. he is so active, somebody like him would build up more scar tissue without this type of regular work. We do get stuff like this. That's why you're seeing a lot of breakup. Not, it's not very common for uh, people that are just light exercises, exercisers. And if you notice, he's now working up into the tricep and yeah. right there in the shoulder, the tricep um, fibers of the tendon and the lat muscles will overlap each other. Mm -hmm. So once again, keeping the theme of everything is connected, he's making sure he's factoring in all aspects of that region. Helps a lot with shoulder issues. Yeah, I was just gonna say, you can tell he's in an overhead position, which lying down might be a little bit easier, but if you're someone who does struggle with overhead movements and limited range of motion as you reach above your head, maybe some impingement, uh, this would be something that is probably going to, you know, bring some of those tight spots to the surface like we talked about before. So all good parts of a holistic, you know, healthy lifestyle, right? Yep. You gotta hit them all. <sighs> Woo! Breathe. Last couple passes here. All right. And there it is. Thank you so much. Hopefully you, the viewer out there, can get a better understanding of soft tissue benefits of you know, really getting treated for massage, grass technique. Dr. Oleg is available for services here at Gravity and Oxygen. Dylan, thank you for that awesome um, analogy and conversation. Yeah. We hope to see you guys again on future Turf Talk episodes, like we usually say in the facility. Good energy always wins. Have a great day. <laughs>